Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my page 112 tag for October 2022. The page 112 tag was started by Sean at Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, he based it off of a French literary prize wherein uh, the judges comprised the long list of said prize, I believe, of novels solely by reading page 112 of the books in contention. So in a normal novel, that would be somewhere within uh, the first third to half of the book. And reading page 112 means you don't have any of the context of the beginning of the story and you have to judge solely based on the quality of the writing on that one page. So I've been using this tag ever since the start of COVID once per month to slowly cull my uh, physical uh, to be read shelves, you know, so that I can easily uh, fill up that space with more books as I've been doing these past few years. So I take this handy dandy books and cats mug that's filled with uh, slips of paper with titles of uh, my books that I have acquired in 2021 and earlier. And each month I pull three slips of paper out of this uh, mug at random, uh, and then I uh, show you picking the books off of the shelves, and then we read page 112 together, and then I decide which of the three books I will be adding to this month's TBR. Some of the books in here I've played this game with in the past, so I tend to just use my old footage for that, but I think uh, I've uh, actually used up a lot of uh, those old books, and a lot of the uh, books that remain in here are new acquisitions, uh, like uh, from 2021, so that would be exciting. I think it would all be exciting. I hope I'll be excited by all of these books. So without further ado, let's go for book number one. Okay, I'll just grab bagging in here. Okay. Ah, Playing with Fire by Tess Garristin. Ah, yes, I believe this is um, one that uh, I got uh, last year. I'm pretty sure it was last year, or even if it was the year before, I'm almost positive I have not played with this book uh, in this uh, tag before. I believe this is sort of a uh, mystery thriller sort of, uh, or suspense. I tend to get those genres kind of mixed up in my head. The truth is I picked it up because it was on the Jewish Book Council site, so this uh, book has Jewish content and I added it to my list and then I found it at my library's used bookstore, I'm pretty sure. Either that or uh, Capitol Hill Books, another used bookstore in DC. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going for book number two. It's always nice to try to get something a little different, like in genre or something, but the truth is a lot of the books I own are kind of the same, same, so uh, we can only do what we can do here. So, yep, just one. Ice Palace by Edna Ferber. Oh, this is similar and different, I guess. Uh, this was a book uh, that I have played with uh, on this tag before, uh, and it is a uh, Jewish fiction, but much earlier Jewish fiction, I believe, or at least this was a Jewish author, I should say, more than Jewish fiction. And I found this book uh, at an antique shop, antiquing with a friend of mine and for our birthdays in West Virginia a couple of years ago, I think in the pre-COVID times, uh, especially since I have played with this uh, book before. So yeah, I'll be pulling it out again. All right, and finally we have book three. So uh, there's fewer uh, slips in this uh, this mug, uh, obviously, since <laughs> I've been playing all year, and uh, at the end of the year I will be filling it back up again with my 2022 uh, acquisitions. Uh, but uh, that'll be fun. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going for this one. Ah, Klotzvog by Margarita Kemlin, which I hope I'm saying correctly. This is very Russian, and I think I do have a bit of a theme in a way. I mean, all of these are from uh, the Jewish Book Council, and this book is also um, an older book. It's a Soviet book, and I know I found it, uh, I think, a year ago at uh, the Capitol Hill uh, used bookstore, uh, Capitol Hill Books. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I haven't played with this one before yet either, so uh, not sure what to expect, but hoping it is good. Oh, 
Okay, now you've seen me pick out these three uh, books from my shelves, but now I'm going to do it for real and, you know, edit the video later. And I'm going to read these page 112s to myself and then come back to you with my thoughts. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm back and ready to read and discuss my pages, starting with book number one, which is Playing with Fire by Tess Garriston. Um, this is definitely just looking at the cover. I know this is a book I got from uh, Capitol Hill Books, the used bookstore in DC, rather than my uh, used library bookstore, which has uh, little uh, green uh, price tag stickers it puts on. <laughs> so anyway, I'm also pretty sure I got this at the exact same time I got book number three, uh, but what can you do? And also, uh, page 112 is a half page, as you can see, before the start of a new section. So I am going to be reading from page 110, just to give, you know, a full page worth of material. So here I go. I'll take a look at it later, okay? I'll figure it out. That's always been Rob's role in our family. He's the fixer. He checks under the hood and tests wires and finds a solution to every problem. He sits me down on the sofa and sinks into the chair across from me. Look, I know you're under a lot of stress. You're losing weight. You're not sleeping well. I'm still having back pain. That's what's keeping me up. You wanted me to go off of the Vicodin, and that's what I did. Sweetheart, Val and I both think you need to talk to someone. Please don't think of it as therapy. It'll just be a conversation between you and Dr. Rose. Dr. Rose? Is this the psychiatrist you told me about? She comes highly recommended. I've gone over her qualifications. I've looked into her background, her physician ratings. Of course he has. I think she could help you a lot. She could help our whole family, guide us back to the way we were before all this happened. Rob, Val calls from upstairs. Where can I find a suitcase for Lily's stuff? I'll get you one, Rob answers. He pats my hand. I'll be right back, okay? He says and heads upstairs to find a suitcase. I hear him moving around in our bedroom, and then the sound of a suitcase wheels rolling across the wood floor. I focus on the living room window, which faces west. Only now do I register how low the sun is in the sky, far too low for three o'clock in the afternoon. No wonder my back is aching again. My last dose of Tylenol was far too many hours ago. I go into the downstairs bathroom, open the medicine cabinet, and shake out three extra strength caplets. As the cabinet door swings shut again, I'm startled by my reflection in the mirror. And I'll leave it there with whatever startling vision she had, you know, <laughs> a mystery to us, the readers, right now. But yes, I, I really like this page. I liked it a whole lot. Uh, I think I read it really easily. I often uh, start and stop with this, uh, you know, sort of videoing. But anyway, uh, there's just so much happening on it, even with, and you know, we get so much information even without the context of the rest of the book. Uh, there's an interesting family dynamic, it seems, between Lily, who is our protagonist, uh, Rob, who is talking to her, and Val, who is somehow also a part of their family. It seems like at the moment Val and Rob are almost ganging up on Lily. That's kind of what I feel like, like there's a sense of sort of, uh, being pressured into something. And, and Rob definitely seems to have that sort of type A, uh, you know, uh, mentality of, you know, c controlling <laughs> mentality, I think. And, you know, there's those asides, like, of course he's looked into things and of course he's done this. And he's kind of talking to her in a patronizing sort of way, almost like, you know, you know, that, you know, I'm doing what's best for you. You know this. And obviously something's going on with her health. She has some pain issues. She's uh, dealing with it with medicine, medications, and, you know, there's always concern about, you know, getting too addicted to something too strong, I think, that sort of thing. Uh, and then there's this hint of whatever happened in the past, uh, which I would assume was talked about earlier, but we don't even need to know about it to, you know, I think, be just intrigued by uh, what's going on here. There's just such interesting dynamics between the characters, and we know that this character, this protagonist, is a uh, in a uh, difficult situation where it's like, what do you want to do in that situation? Like, obviously she's having some pain and she's uh, having some medical issues. So, you know, it seems like she uh, would be in a complicated and intriguing uh, position. Like, you know, I want to know where she's going next. I want to know what's happening. I want to know if uh, she uh, gets what uh, 
I guess they're hoping she gets from therapy and all that. Of course, I also just love therapy and, <laughs> you know, talking and analyzing, uh, you know, the mind and that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is a strong contender. Book number two is Ice Palace by Edna Ferber. If Thor Storm and Sara Kennedy had been philanderers, or even fairly steady patrons of those early day saloons and line houses, lonely when alone, driven to the false comfort of drink or the fleeting solace of the town women when oppressed, Bertie Ballantyne would never have known Alaska, much less become one of its most respected citizens. Sara and Thor took a drink now and then at the bar of the Rocker Saloon or the Poke of Gold. But it was known that they were not drinkers. They were polite and friendly toward the girls. They, they knew the women in the little close-huddled log cabins on Old Creek Road. But no woman claimed them. The two stood apart. Both, to the other citizens of the haphazard town, came and went mysteriously. Baranoff admired the two men, sometimes grudgingly. They sensed that in each there was something distinctive. Not stuck up, though. I mean, they don't exactly act like they think they're smarter than other people. Then, wryly, say... But they are at that. Confined as the Baranovians were by barriers of mountains, water, trackless tundra, and killing cold, everybody's business was everybody's business. News traveled by what was called the Mukluk grapevine. Mukluks are Eskimo boots of soft, strong moose skins or caribou. News then that travels on foot silently. They say, they say, they say, they tried to extract news of Sar from Thor and to verify Thor's puzzling pattern of life through Sar. Each was loyal to the other, though by now their differences were many and acute. Each pursued his own way of life and process of thinking. The men were in direct antithesis. That crazy Svensky goes off alone with his dog team up to the Eskimo villages. They say he's learned to talk Eskimo. He writes pieces about them they say when he's up there, and he lives right with them, dirt and all, and eats the stinking stuff they eat raw. Summers back here, he goes out on the salmon season with the boat crews that bring in the big catch for the canaries, July and August. They say he works like that, summers, so he can do his writing, winters, real scientific writing. He'll talk to you about it if you come right out and ask him, but for all he's good-natured and all, why, you feel he's kind of studying you, he kind of studies everybody, friendly mind, but there's a look in his eyes like he's isn't only listening to you, he's storing away what he hears. Somebody say he's married to one of those half-breed Eskimo girls, but he isn't as big a fool as that. I mean, he's kind of crazy, but he's no fool. So yeah, I gotta say, of the three books I struggled with this one the most, it is very narrative heavy, really thick paragraphs, a lot going on in them, a lot of jumping back and forth between characters. Uh, I don't know if I have some bias about the fact that Edna Ferber was writing in a different time with a different sort of writing was prevalent that I'm just not that used to reading, as I primarily do uh, recently released uh, literary fiction. I'm impressed by all the detail. I mean, I find uh, this town to be fascinating and, uh, you know, all of these uh, sights and sounds to be intriguing, but it's all meshed in too much together. It's a bit overwhelming. None of the characters, for the most part, uh, stick out to me. Maybe Saur and Thor a little bit, because <laughs> we're being told that they're intriguing. But overall, uh, this uh, didn't grab me as much. And finally, book number three is Klotzvog by Margarita Kemlin, and it was translated from the Russian by Lisa C. Hayden. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, Russian names in here, so I'll probably be <laughs> uh, definitely uh, more stop and go with this page. But uh, here we go. He came to the factory as a craftsman when the Enterprise was formed. One time during a work gathering, he said, in a positive sense, that clocks run identically everywhere, meaning that all peoples around the world look at clocks and see the same thing. What did they see? Correct, communism. And he added a Jewish saying, the house is burning, but the clock still keeps time. But that's neither here nor there. They reminded him of that when his time came. He was taken. They decided he'd been talking about some kind of Jewish clocks he was allegedly dreaming of inventing so that they'd show the time properly to Jews, but not to other Soviet people. And this was allegedly how a planned plot would come to victory. Merrick worked at the factory during that time too, as an apprentice to his uncle, a regular criminal gang. But for some reason, they didn't touch Merrick. Their famous relative, Natan Yakolovich Bainfast, who in his youth knew Grigory Kotovsky himself, 
because Katowski lived near Belayat Serkov during the Civil War, was a civil attorney by line of work. He fought his way to a meeting with Prosecutor General Rudenko and declared, You look straight into the eyes of the damned fascist ringleaders and their hirings of all stripes in their conquered den at the Nuremberg trial. Look into the eyes of my relative, Isaac Shmulevich Galperin, born in 1890, who was criminally arrested. You'll immediately discern that he is guilty of nothing, especially because Galperin and the best masters from the factory labored together in the city of Christopol during the years of the war with, with Hitler for the good of the motherland and the military industry, and he was awarded a medal for that. Otherwise, he would have gone personally to the front. But the motherland said, don't go, so he didn't go. But his children all went and fell as heroes. And now my party membership card and all my military awards guarantee what I'm saying. Okay, so um, I feel like a lot is happening on this page that you don't need a lot of context for because it's just immediate uh, uh, danger and drama. Uh, this is uh, the Soviet Union uh, and uh, I think it's uh, well n known or well understood that uh, there was a lot of suspicion and Big Brother watching and people being dragged away uh, out of, you know, conspiracy theories about them, you know, conspiring against the motherland. Uh, and Jews in particular were a singular sort of uh, despised class. They often uh, uh, were scapegoated that way. Uh, so that's what we're seeing in here with this unnamed uh, male character, I think. Uh, uh, I guess that we're getting some sort of vignette about him in the beginning. And then we go to Merrick, uh, who is a named character, who, you know, is apparently also working at the same factory and might even be doing some untoward things or something, but uh, he seems to be okay for now. And then finally we get to a speech, which seems to infer, uh, you know, it's about another prisoner um, who um, I guess is, is arrested for, you know, some sort of conspiracy against uh, Russia or the Soviet Union, I should say. Uh, and there's a uh, hearkening back to the Nuremberg trials, which were, you know, held against uh, big uh, the, the Nazis, you know, pe people high up in the party. And of course, uh, uh, at the, the Nazis and, uh, and uh, the Soviets uh, were fighting each other at the end and, you know, communism versus fascism and all that, uh, or fascism versus communism. So I don't know, there's a lot of history that you might be able to pick up on if you know the history. I actually, in fact, am reading another novel right now that takes place in Soviet Russia. So I guess it's all very fresh in my mind and, and it makes it kind of extra interesting, this page. Although in general, it's a bit of a clunky page. Like there's a little bit of a, Here's this unnamed person who, you know, um, was interested in clocks and then, you know, was taken away basically for being a Jew. And then there's a little nod to a named character, but not much. And then there's, you know, some other chatter about uh, getting another, uh, I guess, named character, hopefully getting him off the hook. And uh, uh, so so it's a little disjointed in that way, but it's, it's, it's certainly very intriguing, <laughs> but it's a little disjointed. <laughs> but all that being said, uh, I think... Uh, I can uh, say that even, you know, I going with uh, just uh, the t t December 2020, uh, you know, clip that I showed, it obviously makes it a little more, speaking of disjointed, it makes this that part of the video disjointed from the rest of this video, but uh, this easily feels like the still the weakest book to me, the one that uh, I'm the least invested in, just, uh, I don't know, just too narrative heavy and just not enough for me to grasp onto. So once again, I think I'll be putting this book aside first. And then it comes down to books uh, number one and three about which one I'm going to add to this month's TBR. Uh, and uh, I feel like I'm more interested in, I guess, the history I understand or or want to understand about this book and uh, the Soviet Union. I think uh, there's some promise of interesting stuff, I guess, in this page. But I feel like it's much more evident on this page. The way that it flows, the drama's just right there. It's very character heavy about uh, these particular people in this particular place. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I, I'm, I was just, uh, you know, really taken with this one. Just had, had uh, just all the, the right flow, I think. So I'm going to go with this book for my TBR, Playing With Fire, which I'm very excited about. Although, uh, interestingly enough, it's kind of messing with uh, some TBR plans I had for next year because this book would have been at the top of my Goodreads TBR next year in 2023 and then I would have, uh, you know, been compelled by, uh, you know, my own 
resolutions, I guess, to read it then, but now I'm going to read it this year instead, and uh, I guess have one less book to read uh, next year, or I guess more accurately, an extra space opened up for, you know, something else on my ridiculously uh, long TBR. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting to this a bit sooner than anticipated. So that about covers it for me now, and you can find the Goodreads links uh, for all three of these books mentioned listed down below, and I'll also link to my uh, TBR game uh, playlist for all of my other page 112 tag videos, and also the videos for the other TBR game I play quarterly. And another thing I'd like to mention in this outro before signing off for good is to shout out uh, fellow booktubers who engage in TBR games or who engage in readathons or that sort of thing so that I can, you know, feel like part of the community here and uh, shout people out and all that good stuff. So uh, this month I am going to shout out uh, Bookish Princess and her Boo to You readathon, which is a Halloween based readathon, so very apropos. <laughs> uh, and it is based off of uh, the haunted house rides at uh, Disney World and I believe Disneyland, maybe other Disney places as well. Uh, the Bookish Princess is uh, well known not only for her booktube content, but also for her Disney vlogs. Uh, and so she uh, based this uh, readathon. Uh, I think she does it every year, I think. This year it's based off of the Haunted House ride and the marketing around the Haunted House ride. She's taken like different lines from that marketing and it uses it as inspiration uh, to propel you into picking a spooky book if, you know, that's your fancy. Uh, so uh, I will link to that video down below. Another video I am very excited to be watching very, very soon is uh, the BookTube Prize uh, 2022 uh, finals announcement video where uh, Robert uh, and, uh, tells us, uh, divulges who the winners and runners up will be for the 2022 book prize. I'm so excited, you know, after all these months of uh, reading and voting and ranking and all that, we can finally see how everything turned out this year. Uh, so uh, I uh, read nonfiction for the BookTube Prize this uh, finals round, uh, and of course I already have submitted my ballot and I have my own personal ranking. I don't know how it will, you know, jive with uh, what the rest of the judges think, but uh, I uh, will be back on this channel very soon to uh, talk about, uh, you know, how I ranked the books and how I thought about them. Now I'll finally be able to get talk about them, <laughs> and then uh, to react uh, to. Uh, the official winners and runners up. So anyway, very excited for that. Stay tuned. And yeah, in the meantime, thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.